Muncher. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up, Vikram? NM. NM. Oh, are you lit AF, brah? Uh, sometimes, sometimes not. Are you ready to feud, brah? AF. Ready to feud AF? <laughs> yeah, sure, dude. Let's do that. Aye, right, let's do it. So why don't you tell the good folk, our pleasant listeners, what we're doing here today? For sure. So we take a movie, toss a coin, heads argues for and tails argues against. Simple. Simple enough. And the movie we're feuding today is, how would you describe this movie, Vikram? I would describe it as a sequel to one of the better Marvel movies. Ah, so you're laying your cards out on the table for the first version of this movie. To be clear, we're feuding Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Volume 2. And you're saying Volume 1 is good. I like Volume 1, yeah. Okay, and care to comment on the movie that we're actually going to be feuding? You know, I'd love to, but the problem is that I honestly... That you're a wimp? No, I honestly haven't seen this movie since probably when it came out. I it think didn't I, come out that long ago. But I only saw it then. I remember liking the CGI and stuff like that. I think it did a lot of this, or it tried to do a lot of the same things that they did with the first one. So let's see. Let's see how this rewatch goes. Carefully, craftedly ambivalent that was. I enjoyed that, Vikram. Thank you. I would like to share my thoughts. This was a fun movie. The first time I watched it and the only time I watched it. Similar boat as you. But I had issues with it as well. So, you know, let's just toss the coin, have a closer look mm -hmm. on the rewatch and mm -hmm. see where we end up. Yeah, let's Sounds do it. good? Yeah, of course. Great. Why don't we get to it? Why don't you toss the coin and see which side we'll be feeling? So I'll be tossing the coin. If I get heads, I argue for. If I get tails, I argue against. And then you guys, our good listeners, get to choose who you think won the feud. You can find us on all social media platforms at Muncher Movies and let us know who you think won. Or you can hit us up on our website, munchermovies.com or on our YouTube channel, Muncher Movies. With that, should we get to it? Let's do it. And I got tails, which I'm extremely happy about, you know. I pretty distinctly remember just tries to do exactly what the first one does. And I didn't like the end effort. There's nothing wrong with that. You just admitted that the first movie was great. Yeah. By the way, did you keep any cards close to your chest? Do you want to share some thoughts that you weren't willing to share before? Yeah, this movie sucks. Oh my god, what a <laughs> shock. I, I honestly had a lot of problems with this movie. The only thing I liked about the movie, which I'll be happy to talk about right now, is the CGI. It was pretty good. It's not that long ago, so it's like the best that CGI has to offer. And it was in space, so it relied very really heavily on it. But in terms of story and stuff like that, it was just like the jokes and the vibe. They were really trying hard to sort of recreate the magic of the first one. It was a great time in the theater. That's what I remember from it. That's the cards I kept close to the chest. So I'm really pumped that I'm for and I'm excited for this rewatch, man. All right, cool. Let's go watch this movie again, man. Let's go. Let's go watch the movie. I was right, dude. I was right. I conceded CGI in the intro, and I'll give it to you just up top. CGI was great. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me pause you there. Yeah. Start off with a concession. Yeah, I can see the CGI, a obviously. occurrence on Film Feud. And just a sign of how good this movie is. Yeah, but absolutely nothing else, man. Weaker jokes, weaker songs, weaker story, better CGI. This is like the John Carter of the MCU. Do you remember John Carter? Wait, that $200 million bomb? Yeah, Disney movie, which is just like all CGI and nothing else. This is, this is the John Carter of the MCU. The CGI is better than Guardians. The direction is better than Guardians. People are more comfortable in their skin. The characterization is better than Guardians. By Guardians, I mean Guardians 1, mm -hmm. Volume 1. What more could you want? How dare you compare to John Carter, one of the biggest box office bombs of all time. Something that almost sunk the Sony or Disney or whatever shit. <laughs> yeah, it did, almost. Yeah. How dare you? This movie was a super hit, a loved movie for a reason. And, dude, Kurt Russell? Everything's better with Kurt Russell. It's like a newfound realization I've had. You know, in Bollywood, that's true of some actors like Nawazuddin, Vijay Raz. 
Hollywood is like just put Kurt Russell in there. Name a bad movie. John Carter should have had Kurt Russell. Dude, his name's Ego, man. <laughs> What do you mean? It's from the comics. Yeah, his Ego. Like the, the only worst thing could be if his name was like Bad Guy. <laughs> 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 oh god Such ego a, ego obvious. the living planet also they play catch in the movie How? they wasted kurt russell on like an energy ball catch sequence they didn't waste him dude james <laughs> gunn boiled down all the stakes of this movie to emotional arcs we've been hearing about star lord's dad and missing father and peter quill and his like daddy issues since the first movie and now he gets to play catch with his dad with a little energy ball <laughs> how cute is that Dude, there were no character advances in this movie. Okay, this movie is a missable entry into the MCU. It's the same tropes as the first movie. It's bad. Re- it's a, like a bad recreation. If this movie didn't exist, and somehow you just tell the world that Antler Lady exists, this movie could have just not been like. Pause. Are you talking about Mantis? Yes, I am talking about Mantis. Those I keep are, forgetting her name. Those are antennas, not antlers. But whatever. If, if her name is not. Elkis, she's not a deer. Okay, great man, Mantis. So if 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 the fans of the Marvel universe are are sort of told that you know Mantis exists, you don't need a movie like Mantis and a Stallone cameo does not warrant a new movie. How about the characterization of Yandu, the ultimate character winner from this movie? One of the funniest lines of the movie. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. followed by what he does for peter he's the best character in the movie and then as for characterization of other people you know what this movie actually explains the characters of the guardians like the first one they just all came together and shit's happening now you find out like why quill is quill and nebula and gamora hate each other and drax is like sadness and uh why rocket is a dick to everyone i mean that's awesome it's exactly the same stuff that happens they don't build on anything that's what i'm saying the real character arc for these guys continues in infinity war this movie is just more of the same thing they they tell you why rocket upset they tell you that quill has daddy issues they tell you that gomora has thanos issues that's it and and uh, drax is missing his family that's all it's the same thing so it the character arc honestly just continues in iw They literally could have just been seen in IW post the first one, and nothing would have changed except for Antler Lady. Can you stop doing that Indian thing where you call it IW? You know, like when they call Facebook FB. Okay, fine, sure. It's Infinity War. You know, so this nobody movie, calls it IW. This movie and uh, according to me, Avengers Two are just extremely, extremely just missable, man. Except for like Antler Lady and Vision. If you tell the MCU fans that these two characters exist. They don't warrant a movie on their own at all. This is the best MCU sequel after Winter Soldier. How many MCU sequels are there? Actually, quite a lot, but they're all pretty shit. By that, I mean like a volume two of a movie, like a like part two, Thor two, Iron Man two. Are yeah, those counted? Sucks, sucks. Yeah, they all suck. Yeah, yeah. Guardians two. Su- this 2? one sucks too. No, it doesn't. Winter Soldier is great, and Guardians two is great. I don't agree with you, man. Ant Man and the Wasp sucks too, more or less. Ant Man, yeah, I didn't like the first one either. But just this movie, like you just said, Yondu is the best character in this movie. That's the in- weakest thing. That's Everybody agrees. That's the weakest agrees. indicator that this movie is. Weak. Everybody on this planet and other planets. I agree with Ego's you. Ego's planet agree that Yandu is the best thing. I agree with you that Yandu was maybe one of the better characters in this movie, but that just implies that it's a stupid bloody movie. There's there's no need for this movie. Did you or did you not crack up on I'm Mary Poppins, y'all? Not really. Shut up. Not the second Shut time. Shut up. Not this rewatch. No. Because you knew it was coming, but yeah. like, come on, what an amazing, hilarious scene. Okay, fine. I cracked up once in the movie. Is that good? It wasn't once. Because we were shooting for a lot of jokes. It wasn't once. Did you or did you not crack up when Drax starts laughing at Mantis? Okay, can I talk about that? Can we talk about Drax for no, a second? Can you just pause? You've been bitching in morning, like since we started. This movie is this movie is a fun time. It replicates the the joy and the colors and the James Gunn, you know, vibe of Guardians One. While actually taking the characters forward and adding Kurt Russell, what more could you want? The only thing I'll grant you is that Kurt Russell, bit of a slut in the movie, bit of a, bit of a man slut, bit of a, a bit dick, of, bit of an f boy. Also, they call just it going days. around and telling people, "Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love your mother. Oh, I love your mother." Balls, man. He's just a dick. He's just a f- boy, bro. That's what they do. <laughs> he's just a dick, dude. He, he wasted in this movie. He's going to get better with age, you know. He's going to mature a little bit in a few million years and then be ready to settle down and mm-hmm. you know, Peter's mom just had to suffer through his like teen phase where he was just spreading his seed a little far too wide and had all these like grand ambitions and slowly life will wear him down and he'll he'll get like a job that he hates but wants the steady paycheck for and and you know, settle down with a nice lady and and it'll be fine, you know. It's a phase. Are you still talking about Kurt Russell? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to check. 
it's uh he's like ego the teen living planet you know what i mean mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ego the living planet in his 20s <laughs> okay quite literally spreading his seed across the universe yeah wasted kurt russell could have been any 60 plus actor mid level how dare you any, how dare you i love kurt russell of I, course i love doesn't. kurt russell that's what i'm saying he's wasted energy wall cat sequence come on man He looks like a god dude with a small g. <laughs> He looks like a god. His his mane alone is the reason nobody else could have done it. Who has a mane like Kurt Russell? No one. That's probably that's why they why. they thought that oh if we get Kurt Russell this movie will become good but that's not the only Kurt thing that makes Russell a movie good. Made Chris Pratt look miscast. Chris Pratt Oh god, I have so many thoughts man. Kurt Russell fit Chris Pratt's dad role so well that I wanted Chris Pratt to be replaced in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. I wanted somebody with like Kurt Russell's mane and charisma to play the role of Star-Lord and his son. I agree. Chris Pratt was miscast in this movie. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? What what was happening with his hair, man? Peter Quill's hair? Like his big sideburns and his like they really got his hair wrong, man. They always do. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, the first the first movie was passable because it was like the general Chris Pratt haircut that we know yeah. uh, even before Guardians and stuff. But this movie, man, they really went over the top. It pissed me off. I forgot how annoyed I was the first time I saw it when I saw his hair. Don't hair shame him, dude. Come, these guys, like, how can they not get hair right? That just, baffles me. It's just unique. They gotta go for a different vibe, you know. But that, that, like, that, such a bad overshot. Come on, I think man. you know what happened. I think his sideburns were reaching his nose, dude. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I think Kurt Russell's mane. Mm-hmm. just in comparison oh like overshadowed it yeah it just made, made it look weaker yeah yeah for sure but i noticed his hair even before kurt russell's character came up so it couldn't have okay. been kurt russell before the nitpicking and the sideburns begins no that's all i'm done with peter quill there's nothing Thank good to talk Lord. about shut up first. just shut up <laughs> how dare you <laughs> nothing good to talk let's, about let's let's talk broad man mm-hmm. james gunn mm-hmm. coming back got fired in the middle he's coming back to make guardians 3 thank you know, I, was, god i was i was i was a little happy that he got fired Oh shut up. Dude if this is going to be the third one I'm out. It is going to be the third one. It's going to be colorful and joyful out, and dude. and have a lot of heart. Tap out. But James Gunn the way he just dug deeper in those characters and still made it fun. You know the first Guardians and this this one's guilty of a two this is an MCU problem they undercut all tension with jokes. In this one I felt like they let the tension be a little bit like Yondu actually goes to sadness, his crew actually dies. he actually dies at the end you know nebula and gamora face off they don't undercut their battle with a joke many battles are like you remember the the joke it's not ripe yeah i want to talk about that okay so that's like an undercut but that's what guardians one was fully like that's what thor ragnarok is fully like in this one they actually step back james gunn actually like felt a little more confident so you got to build out nebula and gamora man which is so cool because it plays into infinity war for thanos this is actually the movie that fleshed out thanos the most before infinity war came out and that's really exciting and then one character we haven't spoken about a new character not mantis baby groot the cutest plant alive in the galaxy seriously baby groot's not cute no do you not have a heart jesus i do have a heart baby groot's not cute baby groot's annoying first time you watched movie the opening sequence how do you how do they even do that you i sequence? i distinctly remember watching the movie for the first time in a theater and looking at the opening sequence and i was like why are these guys doing it i was pissed off because i was such a big fan of guardians 1 and james gunn and what he brought to the mcu i i personally think that guardians 1 is responsible for this sort of informal comedic tone that the mcu has taken for the for the better i i really like that sort of approach to these sort of movies so i was a big fan of it and i was really looking forward to guardians 2 and as soon as i saw that opening sequence i was like why are they doing this because they're buying into it so heavily that they're actually miss- missing the mark by a lot my sweet lord you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> you like that reference <laughs> and should we use that reference to transition to the other genius part of this movie the music One of my favorite songs of all time, "My Sweet Lord," when they go through Ego's planet, beautiful. That's your one of your favorite songs of all time. Are you music shaming me now? Kinda, because I know your music taste. I know that that's not one of your favorite music songs. You don't know me. Time. I'm snapping my fingers right now, by the way. Uh-huh. You don't know me, and "My Sweet Lord" is actually one of my. George, okay, okay. You I know agree. how I love George Harrison. Yeah, I do. "My Sweet Lord." I mean, I hate religion, but "My Sweet Lord." All right, I take it back. I believe you. Okay, one of your favorite songs of all time. And enter Ego's planet. They're mm-hmm. displaying it: colors, joy, bubbles. beauty bubbles things that you won't understand <laughs> you said bubbles someone they have bubbles 
someone who doesn't find baby Groot cute uh-huh. is a monster. Uh-huh. So I'm not sure that there's any point in me even explaining to you. Uh-huh. But my sweet lord playing in the back, Ego's planet being shown, Peter connecting with his father. It's beautiful. This movie definitely had weaker songs as compared to the first one. Well, I don't think so, but I'm not like the biggest music buff, but I just like that, like Baby Driver, this movie is written by James Gunn with the songs in mind. Like, he writes sequences. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that. Well, isn't that great? Doesn't that play out in the movie? That's why it's so good. No, but use better songs. I love the opening sequence song too. I hate that. Just don't. I want to talk about the opening sequence. I'm going to shit all How over it. How do you even make shit like that, man? Like the CGI and the opening sequence and them fighting the monster in the back and all the characterization and everybody gets a little parenting moment with Groot. It's so cute. The only good thing is the CGI, but you really can't argue for a Marvel movie that recently came out in the past two or three years to have good CGI. I mean, what else is going to have? Like Oscar winning performances or something? Obviously, it's going to have good CGI. Black Panther came out much later. Then this movie, great CGI. And it had shit CGI. What are you talking about? It had actually very unique CGI, like a very distinct sort of fe- look and feel to a CGI. Yeah, the video game distinct feel. I loved it, man. The final battle between the two Black Panthers, you like that? Yeah, great. Dude, my point is CGI can go wrong even in the MCU. At least I think Black Panther. Sure, but like weak. getting CGI right shouldn't be like, oh my God, this movie's so good. Like fine, they got that CGI. Dude, right. in the end when Groot is pressing the wrong button in the bomb, I mean, what more do you want from a movie, man? Just heartstrings, cuteness, Obviously joy. he's going to press the right button they're going to stretch it as much as but possible. But the joke, it's a kid. You, you know what? When you have a child, uh-huh. that's when you'll appreciate this Oh, movie. I'm sorry. You have a child? I don't need a child uh, to appreciate this movie. I have a wide heart, a big <laughs> imagination, and just, you and know. Like a delusion complex or whatever. Well tried. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I want to talk about Batista and his character Drax because I loved him in Guardians 1. I love the way they used his character in terms of the timings of his joke, using his personality type and creating humor out of it. He has just overused, man. He laughs out loudly so much. It's bloody annoying. I will grant you the very... If he laughs five times, I'll grant you the fifth one. He like, every time. Okay, he laughs so loudly and he laughs so often that I can literally make a drinking game out of it, but I will not. Out of principle. Ha, 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 ha. What a Batista bomb that fool, dude. That's not how he laughs. Ha, ha, ha. Oh my God. This is ha, 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 ha. What the hell? Why? And he's just like, there's this one stretch, like 20 minute stretch in the movie where like every alternate scene has Batista laugh, laughing loudly, like three straight, four straight scenes. Okay, it's funny like 80% of the time. How is that funny? What do you want? I, I actually respect your taste in comedy, man. How are you calling this shit funny? Okay, the, when Mantis reveals Peter Quill's feelings for Gamora. Mantis is fake laugh. That one's funny. Mantis is fake laugh too. The only thing I'll concede to you, by the way, in this movie is Mantis is acting. I don't like it. Some people love it. I think the actress is actually French origin, so there's almost like some language acting barrier, I think, that's happening. You know, like, you know how, like, Marion Cotillard or other French actresses, like, they're a little off? Like, this is a superhero version of that. She's not off. Marion Cotillard is not off. She's kind of <laughs> off. She's not off. It's just her that's accent's why, off. That's why she wins Best Actress so much, because she's, like, a little off, you know? Also, people don't get it, so just give her, give her the award. Or, like, you know, Melody Loret from mm-hmm. Inglorious mm-hmm. and that shit movie, Now You See Me? Mm-hmm. Like, she's a little off when she's acting. What do you mean by off? Define off. The, I'll define off, you okay. know? Melody Loret, who I think was great in Inglorious. But like when she's acting, I don't think she does a good job. Like it looks like she's acting. And so I felt it was with Mantis. Who knows? Maybe they come from a culture of very animated acting in I France. think you're I think you're comparing um apples and, and uh eggplants and and uh, and like boulders or like rocks, right? Not even f- like the same fruit or whatever. This she's not a good actor. Or that's all I've seen her in, and Mantis is not a well acted character. It's awful. I already said I can see it. I already said I can see it. Her fake laugh combined with Drax's fake laugh. Oh yeah, my god. But wait, if you think about it, she's touching Drax. So she's actually getting Drax's fake laugh inside her. So you agree Drax's fake laugh is bad. And that's what's coming out. But Drax, no, Drax is that on his home planet, that's a real laugh. Uh, on our planet, okay. it's a fake laugh. <laughs> Can't you just justify it. How Drax's laugh is a... Dude, another time, like, Drax go. You know, the Drax jokes are hilarious, man. You know, they use him even better. I actually didn't like him in Guardians 1 as much from the humor perspective. Because they couldn't decide, does he speak in metaphors? Does he not? Is he sad about his family? Is he not? In this movie, his family and revenge stuff is completely left left by the wayside. Which didn't even happen in Avengers Infinity War. So that's no, it, why... No, it actually isn't if you think about it. How? 
that scene when he's reflecting with Mantis, he's just thinking about his family. She no, gets he's upset. He's sad, right? But he yeah. doesn't have like those anger issues that he has in Guardians 1. He doesn't make stupid mistakes like calling Ronan like he does in Guardian 1. So he is freed up to be the pure comedic element. But again, with anything James Gunn Guardians, it's coming from emotion. So when he keeps telling Mantis that she's ugly... And then their mind laughs out of that. But in the end, like, he supports her and he lifts her up into the ground and stuff. It's sweet. Then he's like, <laughs> he asks Kurt Russell if he made a penis. You know, that's funny. Right. That's a fun moment. No. No? And then he tells uh, Peter Quill that these Earth people have such hang-ups. He's like, well, my father used to tell me all the time how they conceived me. No, I did not like any of it. Don't don't expect me to agree with you. Any I feel of these bad scenes. for you. I feel sad you know, like, for you. And and the the whole raising her up and like all of that stuff. Like this is akin to a Bollywood movie at times, which is which is so so bad. Like that I'm even saying it. I was extremely disappointed. Name, name a Bollywood movie that's even that was so Shah Rukh Khan. That scene was so Shah Rukh Khan when oh. he's just lifting Mantis up. He's like, no, you don't die. I'll 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 die in place of you. And, like, I'm just so disappointed with James Gunn, man. Like, because what he did with Guardians 1, Guardians of the Galaxy, the original, it was so refreshing. It was so unique in terms of what he brought to the table and how that sort of fit into the MCU, which is a tough thing to do. It, it sort of judged really well. And with this one, it's it's like he didn't even try to think out of the box. He just kept, he's like, okay, that worked. Let me just power up, like, just preload this shit with more and more of that stuff. And obviously that doesn't work. It has to be a unique sort of piece that works in itself. He didn't think out of the box. He had Pac-Man fighting David Hasselhoff, fighting a rocket ship. Fighting... Isn't that all sort of imaginable from what the first movie was? No, not even a little bit. I David mean... Hasselhoff, like he talks about in like three times the first movie. But they show actually ego converting to that. It was like a, such a crazy Easter egg funny scene. The first movie, just like any good sequel that has a good budget, they up the stakes. Not everything needs to work out exactly the same as the first movie, but I mean, the vibe and the look is what's the same. Even the jokes in this movie, man, they're always missing the mark all the time. Nebula, for example, her character is not supposed to have a joke, right? And then they force write this joke. Her character. Okay. Her character (laughs) says that she's not supposed to have jokes. Because the entire time, like the first time the Guardians capture her, she's like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get revenge. She's all like intense. That's why it's funny when she has a joke. Okay, let's let's talk about the joke. So she, she shoots Yandu in the head in his contraption whatever he has on his head fin her his fin and his entire crew's there he falls she just makes this pose and she says she eats a fruit well hello boys and she bites into what looks like a radish i guess it's a space fruit okay it's a space fruit it looks like mooli which is radish here and then she's like oh hello boys and she bites into a radish what is that supposed to mean it's just a perfect example of weak writing and then she says it's not ripe which is a running gag from the past five or ten minutes in the movie. It's just funny. Still a weak running gag, man. Just weak writing all throughout. Maybe It's Not Ripe didn't work for you, right? It's like anything that we think is super funny. Deadpool, Thor, Ragnarok. Not every joke is a hit. Guardians 1. And Guardians 1, yeah, not every joke is a hit. And you gotta take shots. And you know what? Something that didn't work for you works for everybody else sometimes. So if you have enough that work for you, that should justify it being a good time in the theater or on a rewatch. That scene in particular... I didn't like the it's not ripe joke either, okay? Because it's just kind of weird. So it's one of those things where they use a gag to button a scene for the sake of it. And MCU buttons are always comedic. And I don't enjoy that sometimes. But it was preceded by a badass scene. Rocket taking on like 50 Ravagers. That scene from the trailer where he anti-gravities all these Ravagers into the air and then just kicks ass, like shoots people, electrocutes people badass until the only thing that stops him is like Yandu's arrow and then that scene the it's not right joke was followed by my sweet lord and ego's planet and so i didn't care it's just a good time dude rocket also man like his character is just it's the same i'm a is he a weasel is he a rat is he a does he have feelings yeah he does he's super angry it's just the same all of these guys this character arc continues in iw please call it infinity war i beg of you avengers IW. And Rocket's character arc is very clear. He learns that he doesn't need to be a dick. It, it's all in the final scene. Like, even what he does for Yandu in terms of calling the Ravagers, accepting that he's part of the family, not feeling the need to be a dick. 
that arc actually sustains an IW. But he does the same thing in one. He doesn't do anything new. His character, you don't see new facets of his character in this movie or anyone else's. With a lot of them, man, they just dig deeper into why the characters are who they are, right? Like, they, they actually unravel why Rocket is such a dick. And then the Rocket character building, it's like Game of Thrones. Like, they just make these pairings with people and that's what reveals character. Like, when Jamie and Brienne in season two or three or book two or three, that's what actually tells you what you want to know about Jamie and Brienne. Rocket and Yandu, who would have thunk it, is the pairing that you get to know. Nebula and Gamora, you get to explore Thanos and each other. Okay, whatever, they're digging back into who Ra- they are. Rocket's character arc, for example, in the first movie, when um, they're in nowhere and uh, Drax and Rocket get drunk and just get into that fight, that two, three minute sequence tells you more about Rocket's character than this entire movie does. I love Rocket Man because Bradley Cooper's taking his voice acting to the next level. And in this movie, you know, I, I know you're going to pick on this, but... The voice acting during the taser face gag is actually really, really good. Except for Rocket's for fake laugh. Rocket's fake laugh is like an established part now yeah. of Rocket's character. You know what? I'll give it to you. I'll, I won't concede this in terms of this movie, but just in terms of Rocket the character and every time he comes into the MCU. The voice acting I recently, is badass. I recently found out that I always assumed that there was some sort of voice filter on top of Bradley Cooper, but there isn't. And that's, doing it. That's, 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 that's amazing. Yeah. Because the first time the first time I saw Guardians for like the, literally the first five, ten minutes, I did not know it was Bradley Cooper and I couldn't tell. Bradley Cooper and James Gunn worked on a voice yeah. and came up with it and now he's just doing it. Job. Your name is Taserface? Like the accident, the, the, the sustained, like, I don't know, and character. The, yeah, and, 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 and the fact that he sustains it for like two, three, four movies, however long, however many movies it is. Amazing job, man. I love that. I yeah, love that. True. My least favorite character moment was when Baby Groot is being bullied. Do you remember that? By the Ravagers? Yeah. <laughs> that was so sad. <laughs> oh, God. Dude, you know what it reminded me of? Your fake sympathy is worse than it's everyone else's fake. fake laugh in the movie. You're just sympathy shaming me, bro. Just because oh you God. don't have... Just because you don't have a heart doesn't yeah. mean that I'm not going to feel goosebumps, <laughs> goosebumps when I see a little baby, <laughs> little cute little tree just being bullied. You know what it reminded me of? Uh-huh. Oh, man, I'm so sad. Please tell me. The most affected... I think this is the first... And maybe only time that I've ever cried in a theater cried. while watching a movie. Oh. Do you remember Koi Mil Gaya? You've cried. The only time you cried in a movie is the in Koi Mart. only time I cried in a theater. Oh, okay. How did that make you feel, Vidur? Do you remember Koi Mil Gaya? Not really, no. Do you remember that he's... Ma? Ma? Hmm? Ma? Yeah, yeah. That's all I remember. You're mocking a mentally disabled <laughs> person right now. I'm mocking Hrithik Roshan, just to be clear. Same thing. <laughs> Okay, I take that back firstly. <laughs> in, in, he just did such a good job. Of Great being job. A mentally huh? disabled yeah, person yeah. in, uh, mm-hmm. or mentally challenged, not disabled at all. Just, I don't want to use the R word, basically. Good job, good PC stuff. Thanks. You. But they, uh, the, these bullies, you know, they take a basketball and they just like keep hitting him in the face with a basketball. Hrithik Roshan or Jadu? No, Hrithik Roshan. Oh, okay. And like Hrithik Roshan has that like scrunched up face and he just like keeps taking it and he just has this look. He's so confused why anybody would do it because he's like a child, right? Mentally, even though he's an adult. And he's just so confused why anybody would do it. Now, take that scene and make Hrithik Roshan a baby tree with the largest, cutest, blackest eyes ever. And then they just like, they're like putting some liquid on him and in my head that's like waterboarding him because it just covers him. I'm like, you're drowning the tree. Stop drowning the tree. It just tugged on my heartstrings, man. <laughs> wow. Wow. I tried, dude. I tried. Wow. I tried to keep it together. No, you didn't. I tried really hard. You're sympathy shaming me. I, I couldn't do it, man. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. How did that make you feel, Vidur? What is this? Therapy? No, I just expressed myself and found out it's not a safe space. <laughs> It is not a safe space. You're feuding with me right now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna help you. I'm sorry, buddy. We can talk after, though, if you really want to let things out. I actually would like that. Yeah. All right, sure, man. Post this feud. I'm here for you. Don't worry. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. The last thing I want to talk about: the death of Yondu. So touching, man. God, bro. I'm. I'm. I can't do two therapy sessions the same day for you, man. I pick one: baby Groot or Yondu dying. You weren't affected by Yondu dying, the sacrifice. He may have been your father boy, but he wasn't your daddy. What a line. Great line, huh? Look at me. I'm the daddy now. Yeah, people really like that line. That was, 
Okay. It's beautiful. It just summarizes the whole relationship that's been built for two movies. And the fact that Quill gives up his godlikeness because he kills his own father because the father killed the mother. How do we not even talk about this, man? This, this, this movie is loaded, dude. dude. This movie is loaded. Dude. It's just emotional dude. shit. The stakes. Dude, I can't, I can't take your daddy issues anymore. Let me just go uh, leave you and listen to some music on my Zoom. Oh, the latest player. I'll the grant you that. That was a hardcore placement. Bro. All right, enjoy. And that wraps up this episode of Film Feud. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Now we feuded and you get to decide who you think won the feud. You can find us on our social media handles at Muncher Movies or on our website, munchamovies.com or you can hit us up on our YouTube channel, Muncher Movies. That's a lot of Muncher Movies right there, Vikram. Yeah. Or if you like podcasts, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Stitcher, anything else, Blur? That's it. Pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. See you guys next episode. Bye-bye.